If you've heard about quantum computers, you've also heard about qubits. But what is a qubit? Well, it's two things really. A mathematical, symbolical thing and a real thing in a real machine. We'll take a look into the theory in this short and treat the real physical qubit in another short. That will be linked below once it's online. A regular bit can only take on one of two values, zero or one. A qubit is a quantum system that can also be zero or one, but as a quantum state, it can also be any combination of zero and one, a so-called superposition. And what that means is that whenever it's measured, a qubit randomly becomes either zero or one. And the probability for either outcome is given by these two numbers. Now, having random output is a huge drawback, actually. Nobody wants that. But it's a basic rule of quantum mechanics that you just can't get around. However, there's also a huge advantage to having superpositions. You can prepare qubits in a superposition of all possible input states and run them all through the computation simultaneously. But remember the drawback, random outputs. You can calculate every input at the same time, but when you read the output, you don't get all solutions at once, but just a single random outcome. So having qubits instead of bits is on the one hand a good thing, but also a bad thing. Which does raise the question whether quantum computing can be useful at all. But it turns out that you can write very clever algorithms using these very quantum rules, which can solve problems that would take regular computers thousands or even millions of years. And that's the promise of quantum computing. So subscribe for more quantum computing.